So welcome back to the discussion of spatial computing. Uh, today we will be meeting Professor Mohammad Mokbel, uh, a colleague at Computer Science Faculty at University of Minnesota, and he's also serving as the chair of ACM SIG Spatial. That's the Spatial Interest Group on Spatial Computing at Association of the Computing Machinery, uh, one of the major professional organization in the area. So uh, welcome, Professor Mokbel. <laughs> So first question we wanted to ask you is, uh, how did you get started with spatial coming from a very broad area of databases? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was not really planning for it. Okay. Like, uh, I started my PhD at Purdue University in 2000, yeah. uh, and my field was like database systems. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, but then working in database systems, we find that uh, there's a big gap in spatial data. Okay. That they are not really well supported from the system engine. Okay. So uh, I think Toki was my advisor. Uh, we started working in the special area here, and then I got taken by it for the rest of my career. Yeah, oh, wonderful. And it's also very nice of you to get involved with community service and uh, chairing the ACM Spatial Interest Group on Spatial. Yeah, that's so an honor for me. They are wonderful. So it will be nice for you to share what this Spatial Interest Group is and why should the broader community, particularly the 16,000 uh, students in Spatial Computing course, be aware yes. of this. Yeah, so maybe a little background. This is an ACM organization which has SIG, like Special Interest Group, and for a long time they have um, different SIGs. They did not have a special special interest group for, for special data. Uh, with what's happening now, special data becomes ubiquitous. A lot of people are working with special data from different domains, from database, visualization, even from networking, uh, from analysis. So we, we had a strong feeling that the, those people need to be together in a special interest group. Uh, so in 2007 or 2006, 2007 time frame, some people uh, wrote a proposal to ACM arguing that this should be a special interest group here. Uh, the proposal was welcomed and we established a new special interest group. Uh, now it started 2008. Uh, I become now the chair now in 2014. Uh, we plan to increase the awareness of special data within the ACM community, uh, argue more or increase the community and ask for more people to help us in the special problems. Wonderful. And it has a very successful annual conference. Yes, uh, it does. There's an annual conference every year in the first week of November. Uh, last year we had like 350 people attending. Uh, compare this with the early days, and I think you, you know better than me here, uh, there was this small JS conference where only like 40 people gather in one room. So now we become more than 300 people and the community is still growing. And the best thing I like about this community is that it's really diverse. Not, on, not only within computer science people. Like, yes, within computer science is diverse within computer science, but also it includes people outside computer science. People from geography, from climate, from environment science. Wonderful. So very nice, diverse, and energetic community. They are wonderful. And the group is also now starting a journal. Yes, uh, we used to have journals before, like yes, the Geoformatica journal, uh, which kind of mixed between computer science and geography. And also there was the International Journal of GIS before. Mm -hmm. But a new journal is coming, which is ACM Transactions on Spatial Algorithms and Systems. That's, wonderful. That's maybe going to be more of algorithm oriented thing, uh, more of yeah. core things for yeah. spatial data, yeah. which we believe that we need to push the community yeah. toward this thing. Yeah. And also, you know, uh, it's kind of prestigious having journals with ACM. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. Great. So, what kind of projects are you working on nowadays? Yes, so I have been working on many projects related to spatial area. Maybe okay. the one that's very active now is called the Spatial Hadoop. Okay. Uh, as you may know, there is a great tendency in major companies to work with MapReduce environment and with Hadoop product. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel that Hadoop is not made for special data, it's okay. made for generic data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as people work with special data, we feel that we should be treated specially. Okay. Uh, right. So we did this special Hadoop project. We started this like three years ago, okay. uh, or like four years ago, mm -hmm. uh, with the idea of making the Hadoop platform friendly mm -hmm. and especially aware about special data. Okay. Uh, yeah, since then, uh, we released this product last year, March okay. 2013. Mm -hmm. 
Since then, we have like 75,000 downloads. A lot of people have been using it. Wow, 75,000, that's a big number. <laughs> yeah, and uh, in fact, there's a nice thing that's an open source, so you can download it uh, free, of course. Yeah. You can contribute to it. Okay. Uh, what we have seen now is that people start to contribute to, say, to special yeah. Hadoop, yeah. which makes it even more uh, common to use. Wonderful. So, so I assume the classical Hadoop and MapReduce, they did not support spatial data type, particularly OGIS simple feature data. And, uh, does Spatial Hadoop support those? Yeah, Spatial Hadoop does support this. In fact, okay. that was happened in the second release. In the okay. first release, March okay. 2013, yes, we got the complaints that these are not supported. Okay. Second release was October 2013, we okay. did support okay. this. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. And also, the classical map reduced does not have spatial indexing, or probably doesn't yes. have a whole lot of indexing yeah. to begin with. That, that, I think that's the right. point that makes Spatial Hadoop distinct right. and makes all the performance there. Yeah, it is okay. the way how we index the data, it's the way how we organize the data okay. with an HDFS file, mm -hmm. and that makes order of magnitude performance than Hadoop okay. when it comes to spatial data. data. The thing okay. is, Hadoop deals with right. all kinds of data, right. does not differentiate between them. Right. For us, yeah. we differentiate. Spatial data takes first class in, that right. indexes better. They are wonderful. Wonderful. You also had a very interesting sabbatical. You were yes. in uh, Saudi Arabia, very close to Mecca in Umm Kura University. Yes. So what were you doing there? And in that part of the world, what's the interest in spatial computing? Yeah, that was a new experience to me, and it was very interesting. Uh, I went to Saudi Arabia, right. and I helped establishing a new GIS center there. Uh, it's funded by the Saudi government for like $15 million. Okay. Um, the problem there, I wouldn't say much different, but it has different applications. Okay. Like the place I was in Mecca, mm -hmm. this is a very crowded place with a uh, lot of traffic problems okay. coming around this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Five million people come to the city, stay one month and leave back. Okay. How to organize the things. Right. Uh, there's a lot of special problems. Mm -hmm. Also the topography of the, of the place there, there are a lot of mountains, right. tunnels. Right. Uh, there's a lot of interest there. Okay. In fact, this place, in Saudi Arabia in these areas, they are very well advanced in geography, but computer science is kind of okay. little new here. Okay. So we try to merge things together. In there. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So looking forward, uh, what do you think is the future of spatial computing? Yeah, uh, I think the most interesting okay. thing in spatial computing is that there's no one thing that's future direction. You know, okay. you know, if it's just one thing, it will be very narrow field. Okay. But now it becomes kind of an ecosystem. Okay. Uh, so what I always see here. There's new stuff if you want to do applications. You know, a lot of people in geography and GIS domain do a lot of applications on geographic data and analysis of this. Okay. That's a huge thing. Okay. However, you can go lower in the stack. Okay. Yeah. Lower in the stack, even very lower in the stack, mm -hmm. like what we went for, map reduce environment, okay. uh, supporting big spatial data. Mm -hmm. In between these two, okay. there's, you know, a huge thing is there, uh, visualization, okay. uh, even, just kind of the managing vehicle to vehicle networks. There are many things here. Okay. So it's kind of an ecosystem thing, okay. not to define one thing. In there. Wonderful. And that, I think, is the difference between spatial computing now and okay. spatial computing 10 or 15 years ago. Right. Uh, 10 or 15 years ago, there were very few people actually addressing different issues other than applications. Right. Okay. Now it's more of an ecosystem thing. System. Wonderful. So thank you again, uh, Professor uh, Mokwell, for coming and you know uh, sharing your experiences and your insights with the spatial computing course. Is there any any last comment or any last thoughts you want to share? Uh, so I'm very happy that this is a MOOC course about spatial computing. Uh, it's kind of a very evolving areas. It becomes ubiquitous. Uh, it is the perfect time for any work for anyone to work in spatial computing now. That was not the case 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. 10, 15 years ago, it was kind of limited to those people who are geographers, mm -hmm. those people who would like to make uh, futuristic applications. Mm -hmm. Now it's not. Everyone has a cell phone. Everyone is dealing with mapping. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect time to work in the area. Yeah. So wonderful. So this was a short interview with Professor Muhammad Mukbel, and you can uh, share his excitement about the area. And uh, hopefully, you know, that will make this course even more enjoyable for you. And in subsequent interviews, we will meet with other prominent personalities in the field. Thank you. Thank you.